What's up everybody, this is BR, and today I'm going to follow up a video that I posted two days ago talking about the Apex Legends problem with their Legends. Specifically, I want to go over the section of where I kind of diss some Legends for being, well, not appealing to me or the average Apex community using the Apex pick rates as proof. Now, I was only really taking into account the casual player base as that's what most people are in the grand scheme of things of Apex. And this includes the standard matchmaking and also the ranked matchmaking. And I include ranked because, well, Compared to ALGS, while Rank does harbor some of the best players around, overall it's still very much minor leagues. The reason why I want to go over the video again is because one of the comments really caught my eye. Unfortunately, this comment got deleted for some reason. I thought it was a very insightful comment and it made me think a little bit more critically about the entire situation. And I mean, that's the entire purpose of this channel, to create discussion about games and stuff like that. And that makes me sad because the comment is now lost to time. But from what I can remember, the comment was basically just saying in a respectful, at least I hope so, manner that they entirely disagreed with my video. And I should definitely look at ALGS and other pro leagues in order to understand that maybe those legends that I thought were initially badly designed were actually very powerful in their own right. Specifically, Seer and Mad Maggie. And that's when I found an article by Dexterdo talking about this dangerous combination in ALGS. With good communication and tons of practice, they were able to shake up the meta by using the strengths of Seer and Mad Maggie together. Using Seer's scan with Mad Maggie's drill is just one hell of a combination. And even their individual strengths are bolstered by good communication. Especially something like Mad Maggie's ultimate which can chase down Valkyries. And I thought Valkyrie's relocation was definitely something that was unstoppable and definitely justified her high pick rate. But seeing this shakeup in the meta really made me reconsider my conclusions from that last video. If the Legends really did have the utility to be really good this whole time, then well, what's holding them back and what's causing players to just not gravitate to these? And I think the obvious answer that I kind of gave away earlier in the video is, well, you know, they have good communication. Mad Maggie and Seer really don't work when you're playing solo. And that definitely shows my own bias because, well, I mostly play solo, or when I am playing with friends, I don't communicate like it's a competitive game. I mean, I'm not communicating like I'm playing tf 2 Sixes or Highlander, I'm just, you know, hey, there's somebody over here, I dealt damage, they're one hit, you know, basic callouts that don't really help at all. But what about the imbalance in pick rates? If pro players are picking legends like Seer and Mad Maggie and Gibraltar while the community isn't, well, what's causing that issue? When I look at Counter-Strike, whenever the pros use a weapon, there's millions of followers who also do as well. Even if it's something that's not conventional. People are going to see these pros dealing heavy damage and, well, they're going to try to imitate it in order for them to have their own success. Well, but what makes Apex Legends just so different? And, well, I came to this relatively hot take here. And that might be that maybe those legends that we play a lot really don't take any skill, and they might just be a crutch. The ones that immediately come to mind are Bloodhound, Wraith, Octane, and Horizon. Bloodhound gets free scans without really having to aim in a particular direction, nor does he have to communicate to his team that he's found something, the UI does all the work for him. Wraith has a get out of jail free card that had to be nerfed so many times over the course of the game's life cycle. Octane's stim and jump pad are arguably also get out of jail free cards. And Horizon also gets a free elevator for no cost of her own that is actually pretty fast and can get you out of some tough pickles. Again, another get out of jail free card. And then, well, there's also Valkyrie. We all know that in Apex Legends, positioning is key. And if you fuck up, well, you're kinda screwed. Unless you have a Valkyrie. Valkyrie can definitely change the tide of battle, especially if you screw up during the positioning phase. Being able to relocate with their own redeploy. And in games, tools that correct mistakes that otherwise would be punished are often called crutches. If you can position yourself well, you don't need a Valkyrie. If you can win your fights, you don't need a Wraith. If you can move efficiently, you don't need an Octane. And if you can keep track of the players on your own, you really don't need a Bloodhound. And touching on my previous video, while Seer does have a lot of the same scanning abilities as Bloodhound, his extra utility definitely serves him better. 
as the game rewards the player if they can aim with their seer scan, or if they can utilize Mad Maggie's utilities effectively. Or the game can even reward the team if they know how to use both together in combination. So in conclusion, I might very well be wrong in my previous video, as much as many people do agree with me. Maybe these legends aren't actually badly designed. Maybe the reason why people gravitate to all those other legends are because, well, they're crutches, they're easy to use. They correct mistakes that, well, otherwise would have gone punished. And once you stop doing those mistakes, well, you now have the liberty to play any other legend that has something extra rather than something that fixes mistakes. And maybe, just maybe, the Apex community has become way too reliant on these easy legends. But tell me what you guys think in the comment section down below. If you found this video interesting, like it if you like it, dislike it if you disliked it. If you'd like to see more content like this in the future, consider subscribing, and I'll talk to you later.